All right, call me a glutton for punishment, but I love solving trig functions. It um, really involves a lot of thinking and um, the process is just, well, fun. We've got cosine theta equals a half, and that's basically saying, can you tell me every time on the graph of cosine of theta where the y value is going to equal a half? Okay, so let's have a look at the graph of cosine theta. That's it there. And we've also graphed this line here, y equals a half. So when is it equal a half? Well, it's going to be there, 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 and on and on and on, and on and on and on and on in the negative direction. Okay, so what we need to note here is we've got usually an infinite number of solutions to this, but in fact, this problem wants only solutions between zero and four pi. All right, so we can do this on the calculator quite easily, and I'm gonna use the tech a fair bit in this lesson here to show you how to use it. So recall that from last year, unless you set the domain, your poor old calculator is gonna struggle because when we solve trig functions, um, Unless there's no solution, there's usually infinitely many solutions, okay? And the calculator can't produce infinitely many solutions. So what it does is it produces this general solution. And the way to note if it's produced a general is you'll see this um, value here, this constant, okay? Um, but if you actually narrow down the search range and specify a domain over which it does the solve, what it will do is then go, ah, yeah, I know when it's going to be that. It's going to be, or it's going to happen between these values here. All right, so let's just try that out with a couple of problems. The first one is finding all the values of x between 0 and 360, for which sine of x equals negative 0 0.6. So let's just sketch this and know what, what to anticipate. So this is the basic sine x function. That's 2 pi or 360. And we want to know when it's equal to negative 0 0.6. So here's negative 1. So negative 0 0.6 is along here. We're going to get two solutions. Okay. And I can even tell the magnitude of those solutions. Like one of them is going to be nearly 360 up there. And one of them is going to be just over 180, maybe 200 or something like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve this with the calculator because it's asking for two decimal places. And 0 0.6 is not a number that we know exact values for. So we're going to go solve sine x equals negative 0 0.6 for x, please, where the value I'm looking for is between 0 and 360. All right, now note I could have used less than and equal to, less than and equal, it doesn't really matter if I include the endpoints there. I'm not worried about it at this point here because I know the two solutions are either between or including it. So I could have used either operation. All right, so I'm expecting two solutions. Okay, oh, let's just go into decimal as well. So expecting two solutions, here they come. One, two solutions, that's pretty low. Five degrees, 10 degrees, 11 degrees, 16, 18, 22, 24, 35. There's lots and lots of solutions. Now, can you work out what has happened with my calculator? Well, I've done this kind of on purpose. I'm anticipating two solutions. The calc has given me a bucket load. And the reason is that I'm in radians mode, okay? So because I'm in radians mode here, 360 radians is a massive amount of loops around the unit circle. And therefore it's given me a massive amount of solutions. Let's drop this into degrees mode and see what it tells us now. All right, one, two, two solutions there. And again, it's really good to be able to anticipate what the solutions actually are. I knew that they would be roughly those values. So X equals 216.87 to two decimal places, and X equals 323.13 um, degrees to two decimal places. Okay. So again, really handy to have this graph here so that you kind of know what is going to happen. All right, let's go for it on this question here. So find the, all the values of theta between zero and two pi, which this function here is equal to negative root three. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is just transpose this function sine theta equals negative root 3 on 2. All right, so once I've got this, I'm just looking for when my bog standard regular sine theta function is equal to negative root 3 on 2. So let's just say that that's this value here, which means that I'm going to get two solutions, and the solutions are going to be late. So here's 2 pi here, so it's going to be after pi. Okay, that's what I know is going to happen. All right, so now what we've got to do is reflect on this value root 3 on 2 and work out what we call our base angle, B A. Right, our base angle is going to be, so sine is root 3 on 2 at pi on 3. Okay, now again, for those of you who don't know that by heart, what I know that sine theta equals a half at pi on 6, so root 3 on 2 is going to be pi on 3. If you don't know that, it's fine, you just draw up your triangle, your 2, 2, 2 equilateral, that's 2, uh, that's 1, and... Uh, now that's 2 and that's root 3, that one is pi on, that's 30 degrees, pi on 6, um, and this one's pi on 3, and what we note here is that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, root 3 on 2, so our base angle must be pi on 3, so that's how I've done that, I can just remember that one because I've taught this subject for a number of years now. All right, so our base angle is pi on three. So now what I do is I draw up a dodgy unit circle, okay? And I start to move around the unit circle and try to find out when sine is gonna equal negative root three on two. So here's root three on two on the unit circle up here. This is the y value, root, negative, uh, root three on two. It's going to be down here that I'm after, okay? So it's actually gonna be two places, there and there. So using our base angle, this is pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, 3 pi on 3. This is 4 pi on 3, and this is 5 pi on 3, okay? So they're the two points where sine is going to be negative root 3 on 2, at 4 pi on 3 and 5 pi on 3. We're solving for theta in this case, so, and between 0 and 2 pi. So we're going to say 4 pi on 3 and 5 pi on 3. All right, let's go over to the calc and confirm that. So solve sine of x equals negative shift root 3 on 2. Can you solve it for x, please? And go hunting between 0 and 2 pi. Awkward. All right, now reflect on why that might have happened, okay? Because I know it does, all right? I know this has got solutions. I can see them right here, all right? So why is it not solving, okay? Well, the reason is, well, there's, yeah, there's one main reason, and that is, that is my calcs in degrees mode, okay? Now, why did it give us no solution? Well, think about what 2 pi is in degrees. That's roughly 6 degrees. So it says, hey, go look between 0 and 6 degrees and tell me when sine is equal to negative root 3 on 2. And the calculator goes, never. Okay, because 6 degrees would be roughly there. And there's negative root 3 on 2, so it, it never is there. Okay, so let's do two things. Okay, first of all, I'm just going to drop it back into radians and re-ask the question. There's my answers, doesn't say DPs, it wants the exact values. So we go into standard and re-ask the question again, and lo and behold, theta equals four pi on three and five pi on three, okay? So there's a great lesson in calculator work there is knowing that there is two solutions, visualizing that fact, and then um, knowing what actually will happen on your calculator when you actually ask the same problem. All right, let's do this last question here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to operate on this cosine function and we're going to go hunting for solutions between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. I generally worry about the positive solutions first of all, and then I go back and do the negative solutions. Again, there's heaps of different ways to do this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, note that cosine 2 alpha equals 1 on root 2. I'm also going to note that what I'm solving for here is not alpha, but 2 alpha equals, okay? 
Now that has ramifications in a sec. Let's work out our base angle. Now one on root two, every time I see a root two, I know my base angle is gonna be pi on four. Okay, but I wanna know when cosine is equal to um, one over root two. And in the first instance is going to happen at pi on four. There it is there, pi on four, cosine will be one on root two. Now it's going to go around the unit circle and it's going to continue looking down at those x values and it's wondering when is it going to hit it again? When is it going to hit it again? Here it is. Okay, here it hits the 1 on root 2 again. Okay, and this is pi on 4, 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 5, uh, 4 pi on 4, etc, etc. This one here is going to be 7 pi on 4. Okay. So there's the two solutions between 0 and 2 pi, but note this 2 here, okay? So what that 2 means is that this has a dilation factor of a half, okay? I.e., what it's going to do is change the period. So the standard period of a cosine function is 2 pi. It's going to divide it by 2, which means the period is going to be pi. And that essentially means, if I imagine cosine, it's going to go up like that and that's pi, then it's going to do another repetition of it, okay, finishing at 2 pi. If we wanted to know when it was 1 on root 2, which let's say it's roughly there, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to get four positive solutions by the time we get to 2 pi. So what that means is I've generated 1, 2, and now I've got to go around again to get to kind of 2 pi. Now I know this typically is 2 pi here, once around there is, un is 2 pi, but because this has been dilated, I need to go around again to actually get to 2 pi. In fact, what this will be is like going to pi. Once around, pi, second time around to 2 pi. So let's note these two solutions first of all, which is pi on 4 and 7 pi on 4. Notice that I'm leaving some gap, uh, a gap here for the negative solutions. So I've got to go around again. Okay, so I'm at 8 pi on 4. This one here is 9 pi on 4. All the way down to here is 16 pi on 4. Rock back a pi on 4 is 15 pi on 4. All right, there's my positive solutions. Now I'm going to go backwards and go negative. All right, so I start at 0 and I move backwards here. So this first one I hit is actually negative pi on 4. And I move back around until I get to this one here, which actually is negative 7 pi on 4. I'm running out of space here. Now, if you can see what's going to happen here, we've got the positive version, the negative version, version, the positive version, the negative version. This happens with cosine. It doesn't happen with sine. Okay, so just a word of warning. All right, so we're going to get, I'm just going to move over here, negative 9 pi on 4 and negative 15 pi on on four, okay? So if I went um, forwards, I'm gonna generate the positive ones, and if I go backwards, I simply do the same thing. The only thing is I go negative, okay? The negative indicates going in a negative direction. All right, so I've solved for two alpha there. What I need to do is solve for alpha. So each of these solutions are gonna get divided by two. So alpha equals, and when I divide negative 15 pi on four by two, it's negative 15 pi on eight negative 9 pi on 8, negative 7 pi on 8, negative pi on 8, it's a bit tedious, uh, pi on 8, 7 pi on 8, 9 pi on 8, 15 pi on 8. So make sure you check for those um, dilations from y because that changes the period which will change the number of solutions. Sketch like this is terrible, this sketch here is woeful, but at least it tells me, I know I'm gonna get four solutions, so it tells me how many to generate, okay? It tells me generate four positives and then four negatives to match up with that part there. It tells me exactly what's gonna happen. All right, let's finish this one off by solving it on the calc. So I'd go, hey, solve, and we've got uh, cosine two x equals, 1 over root 2 for x, please. Go hunting between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. 
and there's all my solutions. Okay, so I implore you as you're doing the work here from 6E, please use your calculator to check your work. I think it's a much better thing to do than using the back of the book, um, is get used to using your calculator and get quick at typing these things in because they can be really slow to type in. I find them really slow at doing them.